President, thank you so much for accepting our request uh, for this interview, which we have been waiting for so long. And uh, from your positive answer, we understand that it's the time has come to talk to the Turkish people. Um, uh, the news of uh, Friday, the deal between Israel and uh, Turkey, has come uh, as such a surprise to Turkish people because we, we had another, another agenda last week uh, dealing with our own Kurdish issue. Could you tell us how it happened and how uh, did we come to this rapprochement? Well, it was very much in the air and on the agenda. I think somehow both countries wanted to put an end to this misunderstanding and return to the good relations that have existed between Turkey's, Turkey and ourselves for many good years. Turkey was the first to recognize Israel among the Muslim worlds in 1950. Before it, since the 15th century, uh, Turkey was a shelter for the Jewish people who were, uh, were forced to leave uh, Spain. And generally, I can think about thousand reasons why Turkey and Israel should be friends. I cannot find one reason why they shouldn't be friends. Um, Prime Minister Netanyahu, I think yesterday, after the agreement was reached, said that the motivation also came from the fact that um, uh, the chemical weapons in Syria might complicate things both for Turkey and Israel. Mm, what does he really mean? I mean, was, the, was, was Syria really a, a driving uh, force uh, behind, a motivation uh, behind this deal? I think what's happening in Syria is a tragedy for Syria and a problem for the rest of the world. You know, when Assad, Bashar Assad, the president, president of Syria, came back from London, we thought in our heart, here comes a modern young man we studied in London. He wanted to be a, a doctor of eyes. Very nice. Only later we learned that this is a cover because he tried to build a nuclear bomb and he built a chemical arsenal. Fortunately, the nuclear installation was destroyed. Unluckily, the chemical arsenal remains. It's a danger to Syria, to the people of Syria. It's a danger to Lebanon, it's a danger to everybody. The whole world feels uneasy what to do. It's not a simple problem. And Turkey being a leading force in the Middle East, I'm, I'm sure is worried like we are. During the Arab uh, awakenings, Arab uprisings, uh, you name it, uh, some critics discussed, uh, many critics apparently discussed that is because Israel lost um, its traditional partners in the region like Mubarak, uh, it's somehow isolated more and it feels more threatened. Is it true? Look, uh, no country behaves to make the life of another country easy. But between us and Egypt, there is a peace process. Mosi was properly elected. We respect the elections, and we should respect the peace agreement. And Mosi himself, Mosi himself has very serious problems, particularly in the domain of economy. The reserves of uh, Egypt are short, and the problems are great. You know, uh, Arab countries invested a great deal in higher education. There are many youngsters who graduated universities, and once they were graduated, they discovered there are no jobs for them. Half of them are unemployed. And I think we have to help to create employment. So I think the Arab world is the divided not just among parties. It's more divided among generations, like all over the world. There is a young generation that is dissatisfied with the heritage their parents have left to them. So I think this is the great drama. It's not the spring that has arrived to the Arabs just. The young Arabs wants to arrive to the spring that exists in the world. And you cannot come to a spring in winterly dress. So they will say, yes, we are Arabs, 
we are Muslims, but we want to be modern. We are Arabs, we are Muslims, but we want jobs. We want freedom. We want dignity. Let's really see things as they are. And not all the time pass <coughs> judge the present in comparison with the past. Judge the present with the comparison of the future. And they represent the future. We understand that there are going to be steps uh, for, the, for, for this agreement to take place uh, and for implementation. But when do you think we will see you here or in Ankara shaking hands with the Turkish president? It can happen uh, soon. I mean, uh, we never interrupted our relations with Turkey. And I must say that if you are talking about memories, I have uh, very good memories as well. I was invited together with my friend, uh, President Abbas, Abu Mazen, to speak before the Turkish parliament. It is a rare honor, and I spoke in Hebrew. So I have uh, many memories. But for that reason, I don't want to return to it, because I have also many good memories. Iran's nuclear program. It's, it's one of the, the, the uh, hardest uh, topics uh, that uh, we are facing in the Middle East. How do you think this um, issue could affect things uh, in the Middle East, which is already going through um, uh, existential movements uh, with the Arab awakening? Look, Iran is a danger to the entire world, and more so to the Middle East, and more so to Israel. I don't think the world can accept a nuclear Iran. Khamenei, the leader of Iran, says that religious forbid to build a nuclear bomb or to use it. But they are building and denying. They are building missiles with nuclear warheads. What for? There is nobody in the world that threatened Iran. Iran threatens to destroy us. What did we do to them? They denied the Holocaust, and they are threatening with a new Holocaust. They became a center of terror all over the places. They hang people. They send people to prison. They send terrorists all over the world, from Bulgaria, that was now discovered, to Cyprus, that yesterday the person who tried to act against uh, in a terroristic way was arrested. Who can stand it? What do they want to achieve? If they want to become the hegemon of the Middle East, they will have to overcome the position of all the Arab countries. They don't want to fall under, again, a new system of hegemony by anybody else. They are independent countries. America cannot permit that the whole Middle East will fall under the spell of Iran, and under the spell of the Iranian terror. In that respect, uh, Turkey and Iran are day and night. Do you think there is going, we are going to see more of that rivalry uh, in, in the next years between Turkey and Iran? The present regime of Iran will lose because this is the view of the world, and I think this is also the view of the Iranian people. It's not the Iranian people who are our enemies. It's the present regime, which is brutal, violent, irresponsible, and looks for fire and terror and war and occupation. They don't have anything of a near positive message, neither to their own people nor to the rest of the world. Turkey, while always uh, warning Iran for, for the nuclear weapons, but also trying to have a good neighborly relations. Turkish government also underlines the fact that Israel also has nuclear weapons and the Middle East should be cleared from nuclear weapons uh, totally. Once the Middle East will be free from threat of destruction, there won't be any need for nuclear weapons. Israel is a country which is being threatened to be destroyed. Turkey is a country that nobody is threatening here. 
And Israel said, we shall not be the first to introduce nuclear weapons to the Middle East. And that remains our position. 